All right, guys, time to fess up. Who has shot iPhone footage for use in a professional project? Raise up your hands or at least comment down below. I know that I have, and it actually turned out just fine. In fact, in some cases, the iPhone 11 Pro's footage could actually look better than your cameras. But before you guys destroy me in the comments, take a second and hear me out on my perspective and my opinions of the iPhone 11 Pro coming from a filmmaking background. I think you guys are gonna be impressed. Apple has been pushing the boundaries of smartphone cameras ever since they started, with impressive upgrades year over year. Other companies like Google and Samsung have been catching up and even beating them in some areas with photos, but nobody has gotten as close to the iPhone in terms of video. And with the 11 Pro, this may be the biggest upgrade yet. Now, I personally hate the term game changer, but I think in this scenario, it actually kind of fits uh, in terms of shooting video on a phone. I think that this is the biggest upgrade yet, and if you're somebody that shoots video with your iPhone, you should absolutely upgrade. At the launch event, it seemed like the biggest focus was on the cameras, and not just for photos where they usually spend the majority of the time, but the video section was much longer than it ever has been before. I was seriously shocked that they just kept going and going, and it actually makes sense because some of the features were truly impressive. Apple definitely wasn't shy about this and called it the highest quality video in a smartphone. Typically, they just say, you know, the highest quality in the iPhone or the most powerful iPhone, but this time around, they were confident. Let's start out with the triple lens camera. This in and of itself isn't shocking as many smartphones now have that, but what's really impressive is how they really focused on matching up the image you get from each sensor and lens combination. In the past, when you switch lenses when filming, it was kind of jarring. You would see this kind of weird motion, kind of glitchiness. You would get exposure and color shift, but now you can actually zoom between all three lenses smoothly, and it looks like you have a quality zoom lens. The focal length double each time, which is smart, but but the phone also takes data from that lens that you're recording with and primes the other lenses, both for focus, exposure, and also like things like white balance, and that gives you that very smooth transition. The zoom lens is now an f2.0 aperture, and that paired with the new sensor will really improve the telephoto low light performance, where in the past it used to be quite bad, so much so that I would avoid using that lens altogether in low light scenarios, but now with the 11 Pro, you'll be able to use it. Apple showed off a very cool low light noir style film with really awesome looking grading and I was really impressed. But I've been impressed by Apple's example footage before and I always took it with a grain of salt because usually they have a huge crew of people, they have tens of thousands of dollars of support gear and then very heavy post-production to get it to look this good. But that was only until Phil Schiller said this. That was not only shot but also edited entirely on iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, that is pretty impressive. Not only shot on the iPhone, but also edited. And the software controls that they showed off on stage look really nice. At this time with iOS 12, I have almost nothing built in for video, which is very frustrating. So being able to have that fine control with that good interface will be great for quick edits. Now, before I tell you about two more hardware and software features that absolutely blew my mind, let me tell you about a shockingly good service that doesn't cost a thousand dollars. In fact, it is free for two months and that's our sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering almost any creative and entrepreneurial skill you can think of. Want to get great at video editing? Check out specific classes based on the program and skill you want to improve. If you want to learn more about shooting video with an iPhone, which is right on topic, check out their class on iPhone videography. You'll also find classes on photography, graphics design, animation, web development, and even things like business. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the video description and get a two month free trial. Whether you wanna fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. And it's also incredibly affordable with annual subscriptions at less than $10 a month. Get access to unlimited classes today by starting your free two month trial by using the link down below. Now, iPhones have always had impressive stabilization, but the iPhone 11 takes it to a whole nother level. Just like with the noir film, when I watched this car scene shot with the standard iPhone 11, three things really stood out to me. The first was how dang sharp the details looked without looking over sharpened. Either it is really great post-production, or maybe the lenses in the new iPhone have gotten a good improvement. The second was the stabilization. I for certain thought that these shots were using a nice proper gimbal, but at the end, Cayenne said this. All the shots, including the ones overhead, were handheld. Once again, wow, that is impressive. 
The S10 Plus and the Note 10 both have a feature called Super Steady, which works great, but the quality goes down dramatically and it only shoots at 1080p. Apple is calling theirs cinematic video stabilization and you could still use it in 4K. And as you could see in the car video, the quality looks really good. Right next to that, they showed off extended dynamic range, which isn't the first time that we're seeing this. Last year with iPhone XS, they added this feature, which basically allows the phone to shoot double the frame rate at two different exposures and then blend both of them together to greatly improve the dynamic range in video. This was only possible at up to 4K 30 frames per second, so on 4K 60, the dynamic range was reduced, but with the iPhone 11 Pro, this is now possible all the way up to 4K 60. And now not only does the main lens have this, but every other one, including the front facing camera, which can also shoot at 4K 60 with extended dynamic range and also at 1080p 120 frames per second. As you guys can tell, Apple is very serious about video and I'm not really sure how they are pulling this off, but the dynamic range in that car shot looked fantastic. And that is the third thing that really stood out to me. Maybe they are actually shooting at 4K 120 and then blending that together to 4K 60, but that just sounds absolutely crazy. They also had one feature that wasn't talked about but was just shown on screen, and that is the zoom mic feature. Now, Samsung also added this to their Note 10 this year, so maybe that's why they didn't bring it up, but this should help isolate the sound to one single microphone, especially when you zoom in, instead of blending multiple microphones with a stereo sound. And if you guys saw, the rear mic grill is much larger than we had before. iPhones have always had surprisingly good microphones with good software denoising and wind removal, uh, quite a bit better than many built-in cameras, but this time it will be even better. The last thing that I want to mention is the new Filmic Pro app that is going to be coming out. They brought out Sean Baker and he showed off a shoot where they were using this new app and doing multi-cam recordings. You could see all four camera angles on the screen and then select two of them to record at the same exact time. This is possible because of that new powerful CPU, and I have to say, this is very impressive. I have to be honest and say that I don't really know how often I will actually need to use this, or if, even if I will ever use it, uh, but I do have a bunch of cameras more than I actually need. Uh, but for those people who need to document, such as vloggers or maybe reporters or other people like that, who can use uh, the feature of recording both you know, the rear camera and the front facing camera at the same time, this will definitely be handy. We also have some things like a brighter flash and this nice little quick take feature, but that's mostly for just regular people. So if you're taking a photo, you can really quickly record a video clip. And on top of that, I'm guessing we most likely have sharper 1080p slow motion video. And there's also subject tracking for video. All of these things make the iPhone 11 Pro by far the most impressive smartphone for video. But not everything is pro about this iPhone Pro 11, or iPhone 11 Pro. Personally, I am disappointed that the base phone still comes with 64 gigabytes of storage. If this thing is designed to be a very good video and photo shooter, uh, 64 gigs is way too limiting, especially when you compare it to something like the Note 10, which comes with 256 gigabytes standard, and that also has a micro SD card expansion slot. We also still have the same old lightning connector, which is really a bummer. I wish that they would have gone with USB Type-C since the phone has this Pro name and the iPad Pro has a USB-C connector and that makes it much easier to work with external drives and external media. But of course, knowing Apple, they probably just left this out so they can have something else to sell us next year. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro down in the comment section below. Are you gonna be buying one so you can get better video quality or photo quality or maybe for some other reasons? And have you ever considered considered using an iPhone or another phone for part of your video work, maybe as a second, a third, or even a fourth or fifth angle. Um, I've personally done so with a Filmic Pro app as a wide shot, and I included a couple of those. And once graded, it actually worked out fairly well. So if you haven't thought about it, I would definitely suggest at least checking it out. Thank you guys for watching. And once again, a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Go check them out using the link below and get two months of premium completely free. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.